the sculpture. Guy, my little sculpture garden got destroyed overnight. Very few remains. They got a fascination with sticks and stones. Yeah. Like all the composites of what makes up the landscape. So I'm focusing on how they relate together and how you can sort of intermingle the different elements and what you can create. I've been collecting driftwood all over this land. And I ain't never seen me at a piece like this. They're also different because, like, I mean, the way I generally, that's its normal shape. And this is what it's doing underground, right? So I like to focus on the, for some reason, what happens underground. So you flip it upside down, and now this, this becomes a pedestal for this. So the way I see it, all the trees should be flipped over. And all the roots should be in the air. Someday I'll have a forest with just roots. A lot of your sculptures no one will ever see them. How do you feel about that? Yeah, it's tough to leave them, but sometimes you just, you can't do it otherwise. Otherwise, you wouldn't do it. You can't, you have to break that attachment. It's like doing a painting and selling it. There's no difference whether it makes me happier to leave it in a place where, you know, it may only last a couple days, a week, a month, a year, but it has that, you know, it's in its place. That's and it's, good. you learn a lot from doing it. You know, not every piece has to be something you take home, something you show. This is uh, yeah covered in dirt, and this was on a, on a uh, particularly frustrating day. The, uh, the bush had beaten me up pretty bad. I was out looking for a place to uh, to paint. Finally, found the spot I wanted to get to, and the mosquitoes were unreal. And uh, but there were blueberries everywhere, so I so I uh, ate blueberries and avoided painting and killed mosquitoes. Lost my camera in the woods. Finally made it back. Tore the crap out of my clothes and sat down and did this panel on the beach and. Uh, and then fell asleep, I think. <laughs> so there's a town that we hit our last, second last stop, I think before, last stop before we got to St. John's. And it was one of those classical fishing villages. And uh, it basically, it was, I guess, the second oldest fishing village in Newfoundland. They only had a road put in there in 1965. So it was basically a fishing outport only accessible by boat up until that time. Uh, one of the great things about Salvage was the, was the surrounding landscape and to be able to get a vantage of the town from a peak. We came and parked our bus in the town as it was somewhat a ritual and, and it seemed like the, always the, the circus coming to town, all the kids would peek out of their little hiding spots and you know make their way slowly up to the up to the bus and sort of scout out what was going on. I remember particularly one instance I was doing some work about behind the bus and playing with some rocks just playing on some ideas. I've been noticing uh, how the shores form with the little jetties here and there and just by assembling it I was able to describe to them what what I was trying to get out of it. Being an outsider playing with uh, the elements of their environment. So it was a good feeling to be able to sort of pass on a little message of what you were trying to achieve on the trip to, to a child whose mind is always open to, to new concepts and new ideas. It really was at that point that we knew that we were more interacting with, with the Newfoundlanders, which is a different part of this trip for us because most of the time when we're on the trips, it's just about being in the bush and kind of separating ourselves from any other elements of society, but here we were really delving into another culture and really enjoying it. She'll be fishing for squid to the end of October, you say? Yeah. And where's all this, where's all the squid go? Well, these here and they're drawn. To make the story hangs them up. And when you, when you draw it, then they're pressed out and strips them to the fish pond.
I can remember what it's like to have the painting go the way I want it to. This trip has just been so fucking like social. Or so busy or something. You don't get the solace that makes the good paintings. No, it's nice. It's nice having enough quiet so that you don't even leave your painting when you go to bed. You wake up in the morning and you're in the same place you were the day before in your head. You just go out there and do it again. Getting to, to St. Leonard's was a bit of an adventure in itself. Bad weather kept us uh, across Placentia Bay in, in the town of Placentia for a, a day and a half, two days. Our, our boat that we had rented to ferry us across to St. Leonard's from Placentia wasn't going to travel in the rough weather. So after two days of, of waiting around for the weather to change, uh, we hopped in the, the bus and six of us drove up to Arnold's Cove, where we rented uh, a boat that took us over, a three-hour boat cruise over to our sheltered bay, and uh, they dropped us off and left us there for five days. St. Leonard's was the place in Newfoundland that I got to know best. It reminds me a lot of painting in, uh, in Skungwai. Out in the Queen Charlotte's last year, we were at this totem site that had been uninhabited for for uh, hundreds of years. But these totems, and these totems were about 400 years old. It was such a spiritual place, and there's a similar sense here. The uh, the abandoned buildings, you get a sense that at one point in time there was a lot of activity here. You know. <laughs> I just like getting back into the into the thick of it all, into the bush, trying to live uh, a simpler lifestyle. It's it's definitely it's an indication of a different way of life. I mean, the fact that the people have left here or were relocated in this case, but up in northern Ontario, the the conditions are so harsh that you know there's there's ghost communities where you know that, that once there was a thriving lifestyle there, and, and the, yet the conditions are so harsh. You can tell that these people had heart, that, uh, that they were survivors. This was home. I can't draw a comparison to anywhere I've been in Canada. Um, it's, it's definitely a, a challenge painting out here with the change of elements, the, uh, the weather moving, changing on you quickly, being forced inside for little rain delays. <laughs> 